Ezekiel to look at this message Ezekiel chapter 33 and we will begin at verse 30 And if you've found it, say amen. 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 If you're still looking, say hold on. All right, we, I heard a hold on. Amen. I want us to all be there at the same time. If you see it, hold on, and you found it, say found it. Hallelujah. If you still need us to hold on, say hold on. I didn't need any hold on this time. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning at verse 30, and this is what it says. Also. Thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear th thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Is that not, is that not what your Bible says? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Let us then give umbrage unto the Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray, Father, that it will enlighten our eyes, move our hearts, and, Father, not allow us to do what we normally do with your word. That is, we hear it and forget it. Father, let us act upon your word as your children should, knowing that this world in which we live will not change until we change the way we honor your word. This is our prayer, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. More often than not, Believers acknowledge that there's something wrong in the world in which we live.
too many terrible things happen on a daily basis in our lives that we believe and understand that our world is being turned upside down. Things are not going according to God's word. We, some of us understand that Satan is after our children. He's trying to capture their minds. He's trying to capture their hearts. He wants them to believe a lie. Yes. And this morning we went to the book of Ezekiel to, find, to see if we could find out why these things are happening. Ezekiel said that part of the reason that our world seems so topsy-turvy is because of us. We who call ourselves the people of God. According to what we read here in Ezekiel, it says that we come unto the man of God as the people of God to hear the word of God. But God himself testifies against us and says that even though we hear it, we won't do it. Isn't that a terrible indictment? They will hear what you say, but they won't do what you say. Our relationship with our children sometimes is like that. They hear what we say, but they won't do what we say. Amen? And why is that? Because we say one thing and we do another thing. They learn from us that that's the way of things in this world. And we've taught them to go after the world. Amen. You can do whatever you want to do. Huh? You can't live any kind of way in this world. Especially not according to your own mind. Why? Because when you take your life in your own hands, you put yourself in jeopardy. Amen. It's a proven fact. You don't know what you're doing. Amen. You out here like the world, sampling everything, trying everything, trying to make something fit right. But it's not right. So this morning as we examine this text understand that Ezekiel's message to his people was this Judah is going to be judged because of its unfaithfulness amen we look at North Carolina in America, we need to understand that we are going to be judged because of our unfaithfulness. Amen? Whether our children can survive this society in which we live is going to be dependent upon us. The message was always turn from the world and turn to God. Seek God's face. Find out how it is or what it is God has set in place for us to get over or overcome what the world is bringing at our children. 
we sing songs like this. Oh, how I love Jesus. We sing, falling in love with Jesus. We sing, Jesus. Oh, how I love calling your name. We sing Jesus is the answer for the world today. I have decided to follow Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I love Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. We sing Jesus loves me. This I know. We sing the love of Jesus. Will carry me. I got the love of Jesus down in my heart. Jesus is love. Now see, we as believers got all that stuff wrapped up inside of us. We make those declarations. We say we love him. You know what Jesus says? This people, us, this people, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and they honoreth me with their lips but their hearts far from me. You see, that's why the world is not changing. That's why everything seems to be topsy-turvy, overthrown. The, the, the world, we say the world is going to hell. But the way to stop the direction that the world is, go is going is for us to be faithful to the call of Christ. Amen? Amen. And Mark says the same thing. He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah, he's talking about Ezekiel. This is ref reference back to the, the passage we read from Ezekiel 33 in Mark 7 says, Well, hath I say us prophesied of you hypocrites. It is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Why? Who is, who is this talking? That's Christ talking. You see, we will take words like, all that I am and all that I hope to be, all of my desire and all of my abilities, I'm fully committed to your will and to your way. Except when we run into something in this world that opposes it and we sit on the stool or do nothing. We make the declaration. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all. 
but. See, there should be a but there because we surrender all but the thing we won't do. God is still waiting for us to surrender all, to give it all to him, to say and mean for God I live and for God I'll die. He came here to die for you and for me. And he asked us to do the same thing. Jesus set the standard. To save your brother or your sister, your mother or your father, we need to be willing to die. But we live in a society where we sacrifice our children. Not just abortion. We've got people now, their children are disappearing and they're not, and they're not telling anybody. All these, all these disappearing children went somewhere. When the school called the police and said, this child hadn't been to school for two weeks and the parents won't tell us where, where the child is or what happened. Police go to the home and the parents say the child's been missing for two weeks. We don't know where, where he or she is. That child has been sacrificed some kind of way. When are we going to get serious about being Christians? When are we going to humble ourselves before the Lord? Seek his face. Scripture tells us to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. You know, we can reach a point in our lives when we get so far removed from God. See, God is not lost. But we can remove ourselves so far from him that God will say, it's way out there now. Scripture talks about the time when God says, turn them over to a reprobate mind. You become so wicked and so evil that he can't reach you. But you know for the lost, for those who are out there in that situation, God is always standing there with an outstretched hand waiting for you to turn your life around, not, 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 not turn your life around, but to give your life to him. Because he can turn your life around. I was thinking on uh, the song, Clean Up. I'm going to clean up what I messed up. I'm going to start my life all over again. It don't work. Huh? You see, God, God wants it all. Bring, bring it to him just like it is and give it to him. And he, look, he can fix it up. He can, he can turn it all around. He, he can bury what you did in something that he calls a sea of forgetfulness so that it'll never rise to bother you again. You can't do that. You out here trying to clean up what you messed up and start your life all over again. It doesn't work. God has a, has a, Jesus, Jesus said it like this. No man can come to the Father except by me. So you can try to get there by fixing it yourself. You can try to get there by letting the priest, uh, a priest or a preacher fix it for you. Some folk are trying to get to heaven on mama's ticket, on daddy's ticket. Amen. And mama took me to church. I've been in church all my life. 
but I never made a commitment to Christ. That won't get you in heaven. We are traveling, we are on a journey here, trying to get from earth back to heaven. And I say back to heaven because that's where mankind started. Not, no, mankind started out in the Garden of Eden, but our home has always been heaven. Our journey has been about trying to get there. Christ says there's one way for you to get from earth to heaven, and that's through me. You can't clean up what you messed up, and you can't start all over again without me. You may try to fix what's gone wrong in your life, but you can't do it without Christ. If you want to go to heaven, you can't go anyhow. There's one way to get there, and that's to come and surrender your life to Christ. One songwriter says he wants it all. Another says, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can you. This is the way you do it. Here I stand. Here I Lord, my life is in your hand. All my dreams, all my plans, Lord. That's what he's waiting on. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. So you can use me. God says in Deuteronomy 5, Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me and that they would keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Oh, that there was such a heart in them. Oh, that they cared enough. 
Oh, that they would understand why they should fear me. And why they should keep all my commandments. And not just keep them for a while, but keep them always. Oh, that they understood that if they did it, it would be well with their children. You see, God made a way that we should not have all of this despair about our teenagers. Oh, if you would reel them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Oh, that they would know that friendship with this world makes them in God's enemies. Oh, that they understood that God makes a way that life does not have to be so extreme. Oh, that they would surrender young and carry it to an old age knowing that God can take care of that path that you got to walk. Scripture says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Christ makes it very clear. You don't want trouble in this world. Show me that you love me by keeping my commandments. Show me that you love me by keeping my commandments. He says, if you want the world to know that you are my disciples, show them your love for one another. Do you know how many times we are ex ex extolled to love one another? Christ broke it down like this. If you love me, keep my commandments. He says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love another. John 13, 35 says, but by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one to another. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Still in John 15, these things I command you, that you love one another. Christ says that he that hath my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Uh oh. You see, we say we love him. We say we belong to him. We claim to be his children. We claim to be his brother. We claim to be sheep from his sheepfold. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And finally, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. If you're in love with Jesus, then 1 Thessalonians 3 says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Again, in 
Thessalonians, he declares, but as touching brotherly love, you need that I write unto you. You need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Do you understand that God has been telling us from the beginning? You know, if you've got love for your brother or your sister, you don't want to see him go to hell. But we have this odd, these odd worldly sayings like let them find out for themselves. He's so hard-headed, let her, she's so hard-headed, let her find out for herself. I can't find that in Scripture. First Peter says, Setting, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart. Do you love with that kind of love? Do you love your brothers and your sisters with that kind of love? Are you willing to lay down your life for your brother, for your sister, for your mother, for your father, for your son, or for your daughter. What kind of love do you have for Jesus? Amen.